believe it or not, I reckon this bike is fully equipped for indefinite travel. Two panniers, tiny tank bag and a few other bits and bobs. Okay, so I'm back from my trip, had a great time. Obviously I went to the uh, Himalayan base camp and then I was gonna do a tour around Wales, which you might have seen that video. It ended up just being a tour and not doing the tech for um, all the reasons that I mentioned in that video. And then of course went off to Banky Barn, which was just absolutely brilliant. Now, one of the things that happened quite a lot on the whole trip was um, people were asking me about my kit. And so rather than kind of going through everything with everyone, I told people, right, what I'll do is I'll just put up a video. So if this is your kind of thing, if you're interested in, in how I carry all my kit, um, then stick with it. Um, if not, then fine, just go and watch one of my other videos. Um, all right, so what I've done is I've set up the whole bike for um, indefinite travel. So I think, I mean, this, this was like a sort of 10 days away, trying everything out. Um, and I will have missed things, I'm sure I've missed things. So if you're a hardened seasoned traveler and you're watching this and you think, he missed this really important item, then just let me know in the comments down below. Um, or if you think, think uh, right, you've taken that, but you're really never gonna, never gonna use it. Um, so what I've tried to do is whittle everything down to as little as possible. So I've managed to get everything basically in my two, um, my two panniers. This. So for Banky Barn, I swapped to this one, which, um, which I'll just show you. That one just goes on with magnets, which is fine. Then there's a strap as well, if you want to put the strap on for when you're doing off-road. Um, but that was just too big. And so when I'm standing up on it, I was just bashing into that. It was very uncomfortable, believe me. Um, and uh, so I, I would always swap back to the other one. So this little one, is um, it's still got magnets on it. The magnets go basically in front and behind the, uh, the petrol cap. Again, it's got a strap. Um, the strap's all in there, but I can put that strap around um, for, for off-road. On-road, it's not a problem. And the great thing is, if you're, if you're on the road, you can, because uh, uh, I've got all my valuables in here and everything else is locked, when I get somewhere, I just pull this off and, um, and uh, and I'm away and then I can just carry that if I'm going to a cap or something like that just get buying, buying something or just into a petrol station I can just carry that if I want to carry it for longer I've got this little bag here which is fantastic and opens up like this into a little backpack um, so it means that I've got expandable luggage but it also means that if I'm going for a walk away from the bike I can just pop that inside the bag and uh, pop it on my back and I'm away and I've got all my valuables. Um, so what are those valuables? Well, I'll show you. Just uh, to fold this up and just shove it all inside itself. It's brilliant. It's only about this was like a last minute purchase. I thought, oh, what if I need to expand my luggage? But it turned out to be so useful, much more useful than I thought. It's about six quid, I think, from go outdoors or somewhere like that. So first of all, crunchy bar, or whatever that is, in case you get hungry. Secondly, coffee flask. Um, so in the morning, I was able to just uh, make up a bit of porridge and a flask of coffee and that would last me all day. Now this is a, a dry bag. Um, now I use the dry bag here in case I took a dip in a, in a Ford somewhere, came off and hurt myself. So inside the dry bag are things that I don't want to get wet. So the first one, in fact what I've got here is I've made a little, a little foam holder for my phone so that if it, so it doesn't, if, not my phone, my camera, so it doesn't get too bashed around. Um, and that is a fantastic 18 to 200 millimeter travel lens. Um, compact phone lightweight mirrorless so it's got no moving parts so I went for went for one that was deliberately went for a mirrorless one so that um, so that there's less to go wrong and it's lighter weight and more compact um, and superb lens there so that goes in there um, and then also just a few other bits so that's a, a charger for the battery for that camera um, memory cards they're all numbered so I know which ones have been used um, uh, GoPro holders that's a, like a fake GoPro thing that I rarely use because it makes awful sound but if, if nothing else works I can just put in sound from another track so these um these dry bags I bought them as a pack of three and they're all different colors which is great 
because they help you to identify what's what if they're all next to each other in your tent or whatever. So, and they're great for organising stuff. A um, couple of masks, obviously COVID times. Um, we've also got in here emergency items. <laughs> I wanted to take a guitar, but obviously you can't take a guitar on a motorbike travelling trip. So um, harmonica, and I've just sort of started learning how to play. <coughs> Wrong way up. <laughs> Right, so harmonica, knife, just general stuff that you need and that you don't want to leave lying around. Um, in this side, earplugs, spares for the um, for the for the headset for if I'm listening to podcasts or music or sat nav. Um, tiny weeny tripod, which will do either the the camera or the GoPro, and it's got little it's got little uh, extendable extendable legs like this two of them extend one of them doesn't and so you can point that and stand anything on it or stand any camera on it um, so that's quite handy didn't use it much I think I only used it once so maybe that's something that doesn't need to go um, and then on this side just um, glasses hand gel sun cream I might have to wait a minute what is it um, panniers right first thing that I did was um, in the top I wanted stuff that was always needed to be accessible so I've got torch in this one waterproof waterproof trousers waterproof jacket this is one of the navy um, uh, foul weather jackets absolutely brilliant um, can't 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 beat it it's just superb and it doesn't billow when you when you're riding along either um, and here warm layer first aid kit and the bag that I mentioned before um, now um, the, the principle that I've gone for is trying to build all my clothing up in layers. So, so I've got obviously the protective layer, my jacket. Um, I've got the warm layer, the waterproof layer, the t-shirt, the bottom layer, if you like. And then I've, I can also put on a put on a jumper as well. Um, so, but all of those things can be used for uh, for other purposes as well. So, so if I'm out in the evening and it's raining, which it did a lot, believe me, I can just wear that with a t over a t-shirt. Uh, and swap and change and mix them up so um, if it's cold I can put on a bunch of layers but I don't always have to wear the, the bike jacket and in fact the plan is to to not use that for long journeys um, but just to use armour um, because it, it, it's less bulky and uh, and I can probably hopefully just um, attach it with my helmet and gloves to the to the to the bike so that I don't have to carry so much around so in terms of um, layering up the kit uh, I just use knee pads because that means that um, I can just wear ordinary jeans or whatever trousers I want, put them underneath them and um, and then I can just take them off and use the jeans for other stuff in the evening. Um, right, so the basic first aid kit, um, normal sort of stuff in there. Right, clothes, right, shoes. These were these are aqua shoes and they're brilliant because um, you can wear them as like a hiking sort of uh, sandal if you like, but you can wear them in water. Um, the back folds down flat so you don't have to put them on properly you can just slip them on like a pair of crocs or something they pack up quite small doesn't matter if they get wet and on occasion when i was a bit tight on space in my packing i think i just did it the once i strapped them to the rack there um and cause it doesn't matter if they get wet um spare gloves um they were kind of almost the hair that broke the camel's back in terms of fitting everything in obviously toiletries normal kind of stuff um hand gel soap shaving gear um deodorant whatever all the, all the normal stuff nothing unusual in there oh i'll tell you what is good though this is like a little a little toothbrush that you can put like that brush your teeth but then when you're finished um it doesn't matter if it's still a bit wet it goes inside itself and you can put that back in your bag without everything getting wet so if i show you what i've got for the food i've got um coffee and powdered milk. The powdered milk was good for the porridge and for the coffee in the morning. So I'd just boil up some water and one pan was almost exactly the right amount for, for a coffee and some porridge. Little porridge packets um, which add the powdered milk and the water and you've got porridge which is nice every morning. Um, some little some little noodle and pasta kind of um, uh, meals that you just add hot water to. Now obviously I was eating out quite a bit and, and um, not eating out but eating 
probably mostly rubbishy food. Knife, fork, spoon, little pack. I know that a lot of people use a spork, I just haven't got one. I've gone with the principle of where possible using what I can. So that was uh, some of the food. Obviously that expands and shrinks uh, during the trip depending on what you're using. Um, cooking, what have we got? We've got tranja. So just normal tranja gear. So I love this, I love the tranja because it doesn't matter how windy it is, you can be going, a lot, going, going away and setting up your tent and all that stuff and, and it, it, in fact the windier it is, the hotter it seems to get. Um, coffee filters, frying pan, obviously the frying pan also acts as a lid. Different kind of bike to this one. <laughs> obviously the frying pan acts as a lid to keep heat in when you're boiling water. Little handle, um, little coffee filter dripper thing. I don't know what you call that, conical thing. Um, now, the, for the, uh, oh, obviously, scarer for cleaning up. A um, couple of lighter to light the thing. Gone are the days when I always had a lighter in my pocket. That was a long time ago. A um, couple of bowls. And then the tranger itself um, with the burner. The burner's in this bag along with, I just took it a couple of small pots that I found. I want to try and find something a bit better with spare fuel in, um, ethanol. Um, but those and then the little burner itself which probably left a bit of fuel in yeah a tiny bit by the sound of it um, and then of course that's got the, uh, the simmer ring so um, Trancher excellent miles prefer it to using gas it's just it's, it's easy to fuel up you can fuel it on any kind of alcohol even the drinking kind if you so choose um, might get a bit expensive doing it that way I guess um, and it, you just leave it. It takes a lot longer to... to <laughs> it takes a lot longer to uh, heat up, obviously, than, um, than uh, the gas ones, but, but that seems a bit relevant when you're just busy getting on with other stuff and setting up camp and things. Um, boot oil, uh, what's it called? Leder grease, I probably pronounced that wrong. Leather grease, I guess, in German. Um, but these are Altberg, um, Altberg army shoes. They're fantastic. Don't leak at all, and um, and of course they're really comfortable. So when you get somewhere, you, you can wear them out and about if it's a bit wet and boggy and horrible, and you don't want to wear your lightweight things, or if it's a bit cold. Um, a couple of plastic bags, always useful for putting your dirty laundry in or whatever. Uh, multimeter and leads batteries for the head torch um, I've also got here two old phones and um, and a Kobo so in case I want to read a book although I didn't actually want to read a book at all but um, the two old phones in case my main phone goes down my main phone keep on um, in here and it will just charge from this charging point here but I've also got two extra charging points here which I'll run leads out into this bag to charge things like um, things like the GoPros and fake pros whatever they are and um, and the camera battery and anything else so as so long as I was disciplined I could keep everything charged all the time uh, spare pair of gloves uh, they can add warmth to my regular gloves if it's getting cold it never got that cold um, obviously socks and what I've done is I've packed all my clothes here in rolls which obviously I've stacked vertically because you can pull out the one you want and put it back in and it works quite well because everything's accessible but also it takes up a lot less space so I've got a shirt a jumper a pair of jeans for the evenings a pair of running trousers that I use like long johns in case it gets cold never had to use them a pair of shorts um, three t-shirts um, three sets of underwear three sets of socks um, and that's about it I figure that the three three sets of t-shirt three t-shirts three socks three undies um, along with the ones that I'm wearing means that it'll last me for half a week and so if I'm a bit manky, I can go a whole week without having to wash, but I wouldn't want to go longer than that. Um, pr um, so, so a bit of soap can get all that washed, find a stream somewhere. Right, the other pannier, this is all about um, camping gear. Again, my third dry bag. Now, um, I didn't know what I was going to use this for. I thought I was going to use it for dirty underwear. But actually, um, what I found is if you put a tent away in here with everything else, um, when it's wet, everything else gets wet. So that now goes in. So this one's the other way around. Um, the others were, were to stop things getting wet. This was to stop the wet getting out. So inside there is um, the ground sheet and the fly sheet in my tent. Um, poles, 
I just kept them separately. If you pack everything together, it seems to take up more space. Pegs, um, camp bed, which you'll have seen on the video, Himalayan um, base camp video. This is the silk sleeping bag liner, which um, which is like uh, basically I've got three sleeping bag liners. Oh, here's the hammock. I forgot about the hammock. That's the hammock all rolled up. You'll have seen that on one of the videos. Um, and in here, so the silk one can be used on, your, on its own if it's a really hot evening um, or it can be used um, as an extra liner and it gives uh, like an extra load of warmth and then here at the bottom I've got rolled up my sleeping bag and um, and my uh, fleece liner which I've put in this bag and I've got it all kind of tied down with a strap to compress it so that it fitted in quite well. Now. It's a bit of extra hassle getting everything, all the camping gear into one pannier, but um, probably takes me only about 10 minutes longer than if I didn't compress everything and all that. And it saves a lot of space and it means that I'm traveling effectively without, without well, basically I haven't got anything on the rack. I haven't got a whole load of stuff that, that um, wobbling around or that's easy to nick, just everything's lockable. I have got, if I need it, um, top box to go on the back, but, um, hasn't been necessary yet. So that's that pannier, that's all the camping gear. Of course the panniers make a great seat in the evening, that or even better the hammock. Um, and what I didn't know is that you can put the bike on the centre stand, tie one end of the hammock to the, to the back of the bike and the other to a tree. So you only need to find one tree and get the right distance from it. And you've got the most unbelievably comfortable seat, especially if you sit crossways on the, uh, on the hammock like you saw me do on one. Well here's a clip here. So tool tubes. Um, all my tools are in these tool tubes, so one tool is all you need, and that is actually the wheel nut spanner for taking off either the front or the back wheel, and, and you can use the extension which is in the bag. But I've also, it also exactly fits these tool tubes so that I can undo them. This is like a, I don't know what you call it. I'll put a link in the description. I think I bought all the bits for these from Screwfix and it cost me about 30 quid. Right, what's in here? We've got um, split link for the chain, spare uh, well nuts for the fairing, spare nuts, bolts and washers. There we go. So that was a f initially a full roll of gaffer tape, but I had to take a load of it off for it to fit in the, fit in the tube. This is an old sock, so I used old socks quite a bit. Right, this one's got brake pads and electrical connectors in it. Um, so you never know when you're going to need those. You know those socks that you kind of end up with just an odd one? You can't find the rest. That's what I've used these for. It stops everything rattling around. It makes it easy to find stuff. Uh, spark plug, um, blue lock tight, blue lock for the for, uh, for bolts, um, WD-40, black repair paint for, um, for if I have to change the tire and I chip the rim. Um, and this is chemical metal here. Um, you just mix the two parts of it. Ratchet strap, useful for towing, useful for strapping stuff down, useful for all sorts of things. Spare oil filter. I don't carry enough oil to do a full oil change because you, you, you plan ahead. I've got both, um, both levers here. So, uh, clutch lever, brake lever, some zip ties, and finally, half a litre of oil, well a bit less now because I had to lend some to somebody, um, but that's just for, to top up, there's nothing else in there. Uh, the other thing to mention about this spanner is that if, if you look carefully I've marked out one centimetre little dot so that I can um, check my chain tension. As well as the um, clutch and brake levers I've also got spare cable, so I've run the cable, cable tied it next to the original cable there, put, put a plastic, off, that's the finger off a, off a glove, off a plastic glove just to keep it protected. So I've done that for both cables, clutch and throttle, run them in parallel so that they take up no room. You don't notice them, but they're ready there in the right place, ready to swap over. This side, electrician's tape. And this is my main tool bag. Again, a couple of socks. We've got in here all the tools we need. Feeler gauges, various open-ended spanners, extension for the spanners that come with the kit. Now this was the mistake. I bought a light, cheap top nut spanner, 30 mil spanner, thinking, oh, that's great, it's so light, and then of course tried to use it and it just bent. So um, I need to get a more heavy duty top nut spanner. I've got a C spanner here, which I used for just 
tightening my steering head. Um, it's not exactly the right size, but it's one I had knocking around and it works. Um, what else have I got in here? Um, yeah, so as, as you just saw, I've got a center punch. Oh, teeny mole grips. Um, they are brilliant. So that's probably the most useful tool I have, little tiny mole grips, and they can act as a third hand to hold things, stuff in place. Um, they can act as a pair of pliers, um, but you obviously you can just clip stuff down. Um, and they, they're just superbly useful. And in an emergency, I guess I could use them, clip them on if I break off a lever. I couldn't find a spanner the right size to set the tappets, so I use the mini mole grips and you can just clip them on and just adjust them. Once they're clipped on, it's very easy to just adjust them a little bit each way and then use a spanner to tighten the nut. And I found it a really easy way to do it. It's a bit difficult to get into the rear one, um, the, um, the inlet, but, uh, but it's doable. So, um, so yeah, nice little way of, of uh, not having to carry an extra tool. Right, this is the Barco or Bako, however you say it, um, uh, socket set. Well, actually, there's also a standing knife. I'm probably going to swap that for you know the ones that you break off the little blades on just because they take up less space. Um, so this, I've swapped out loads of stuff so that I've got just the stuff I need. So obviously, little ratchet, which is superb. Extension, various various hex bits. Um, so basically, replacing Allen keys. Um, various sockets at uh, this end one um, it's just for for putting on there so that you can put the hex bits in so the hex bits all fit into there um, different sizes can't remember what sizes they are, they are but I work them all out a six eight ten eleven twelve thirteen and then I've got a fourteen here but the fourteen needed an adapter so there's the adapter so that I can upsize I've also got obviously one for the spark plug and then this this one's for the um, for the oil drain plug. It, I've probably missed stuff, and we'll find out at some point the ones I've missed. But what I do is I only ever do any work on the bike using this toolkit, so that I can a work out what might be missing, and b because I've only got a short handle on this, I'm not going to over torque something to the point where on the trail I can't uh, can't undo it. Another strap, some some rags always come in handy um, for all sorts of things. Uh, just spare little bits. So these are these are for the phone holder. A couple of spare rubber mounts for the phone holder, and a spare one of these little uh, little caps for the uh, for the petrol or water. Um, puncture repair stuff. So there's patches, there's glue, there's sandpaper, um, there's the uh, tire nuts, a uh, bunch of fuses in there. I've also got um, a uh, a valve cap um, but I've got also the little valves out because that, that, um, that's just so easy to lose in fact last time I let down a tyre by taking out the valve it just shot out into the grass somewhere and never saw it again so um, there's also a, a spring puller in there um, and a couple of bits of dowel for just um, shoving in between the brake pads if I take the wheel off what else is in it obviously a pump uh, this is brilliant um, Halford special um, but uh, what I like about this one is it's, it's got a really accurate dial but also this tube makes it a lot easier when you're pumping and it doesn't take as long as you think to pump it up I think it's 150 pumps can't remember if that was the front wheel or the back wheel a file so with the center punch and the file it should be impossible in, in theory be possible to uh, split a chain um, manky toothbrush for cleaning stuff three tire leaves and a long pair of pliers um, uh, not pliers and a long pair of tweezers tweezers obviously are useful for if you drop something somewhere you shouldn't inside a bit of engine or somewhere and then the three tire levers. <laughs> hacksaw blade, obviously I can't bring a whole hacksaw but that's a hacksaw blade um, so I can saw things with difficulty, nothing else in there and then two inner tubes so there's a front and a, and a rear inner tube in there. Um, not heavy duty ones, these are the standard ones. I've put heavy duty ones on the bike but these, uh, when I took the standard ones off I thought I'll keep those and I'll put them in my tool tube. Of course uh, the tool tubes do mean that uh, they're fully waterproof so no water can get in those even if you drop them which is great and they also do mean that when you've got the panniers off like this and you're just going for a bit of a ride maybe off-roading or whatever you've got your full toolkit with you um, so you don't need to worry about anything the, in principle that should be enough stuff to go traveling indefinitely through different climates um, camping um, and sometimes not camping um, doing all the repairs and bits and pieces uh, stocking up as I go um, and it's all pretty minimal basically two panniers two tool tubes and a tiny weeny little um, 
tank back there uh, and of course obviously the petrol and um, the petrol and water tanks the petrol one really when I went across Australia there was a sign saying however many hundreds of kilometers it was to the next petrol station so occasionally not probably in Britain anywhere you do need to carry extra petrol so that's what that was for but it, it turned out it's useful if you just happen to run out somewhere the other advantage of these tanks the water and fuel ones is that um, oh by the way I just put those stickers on I just cut those on a sticker cutter with vinyl cutter um, but the other advantage with the with the tanks is um, because they're so so robust I can't remember what they're made of it's the plastic that that um, isn't affected by petrol but it's really robust you see pictures of cars driving over these kind of tanks and stuff and it not damaging them and you don't damage your indicators when you come off both these indicators being broken numerous times but not damaged at all since I've put these on you see that one's a bit bent but since I put these tanks on they've not been damaged at all whenever I've dropped it and it generally protects other bits and pieces as well around the bike so that's about it I hope you've enjoyed the video it's a bit different to my other ones and not necessarily um, kind of action-packed and all that kind of stuff but um, I'm doing it for a bunch of reasons one is so I know how I pack and it will remind me one is because people asked and, um, and third is to get feedback off you if there's anything that I've missed or that I'm taking that I don't need to take so brilliant, I hope that's useful and uh, please do leave feedback in the comments below.